our regular decision meeting for this evening of the regular police team for the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Board of Education. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, School District Public Advocate, running for County Executive in August, and I will be filing for the school board in December. Um, first of all, I'd like to say um, I've asked for years for a ADA, Americans with Disabilities, front door automatic panels for people who are disabled in a wheelchair or crippled for some reason or um, some temporary reason or permanent reason. They have. They don't know to go to the back door or the access to this building. And so, since you put up the flag, and since you have all this money that you've asked taxpayers for, why don't you comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act and do the right thing and put a ADA compliant door at the front door with the paddles. Leah Barnett, a resident, is still waiting to be on the agenda for discriminatory type uh, attitude from the principal of her high school that her children go to that you still have not addressed in a public venue as she has asked you. I will not allow any discrimination to take place at any of our school buildings or with any of our employees throughout the district. I cannot wait until August 28th because Governor Mark Parsons signed into law the education bill which will require that this Board of Education, after being contacted by a member of the public, has two months to put an agenda item on the agenda requested by that community member. If you fail to do so, uh, there will be a uh, writ of mandamus filed in County Circuit Court. There is items in the law that allow for contempt orders to be signed by a judge, and civil penalties that each one of you will be individually personal libel for, not the district's insurance policy, and a court order by a circuit judge. It's very concise, very to the point, and I think you need to get on the same page with the community. You also owe a huge apology to Juan Wilson in the way that you treat him. In my opinion, you discriminate against Juan Wilson, who's trying to bring diversity and trying to solve uh, some unrest within our school buildings in terms of public safety. Now the superintendent's contract, I've asked for now going on two years of the board secretary for that information. And you violated chapter 610 of the revised state statutes. Either you give me the information or I'm going to file a writ of mandamus and ask a court judge to force you to give me that information. How are we going to pay the $600,000 of vacation and sick time due to Mr. DeBray at the end of this 23-24 uh, school year? I'm sorry, 22, 23 school year when he retires. Um, you all missed a great opportunity on Saturday with the city of Wentzville to stop school violence. Uh, the city of Wentzville had a public uh, safety summit and you failed to show up even though that you were invited. It discussed bullying, physical violence, and other issues. And I'll just sum up in about 10 seconds. You have a right to, you have a, you failed in many cases to report to Department of Children and Family Services, the Safe Schools Act, report to DESE, report to the police, the county prosecutor, and there's more cover-ups that go on on a daily basis in this school. I'm calling for a stop to school violence and school bullying, and if I find that out, I'm going to report it myself to DFS, the county prosecutor, and the police department. Thank you. Um, 
Good evening. My name is Barb Talbot. For those of you that don't know, I'm a retired Fort Zuma teacher after 34 years, and I've been subbing in the district as a substitute teacher for the past 11. Um, this is not a gripe. This is just maybe I'm going to kind of enlighten you where the substitutes come from um, because I, you know that it's getting hard and I, the incentive has been great that was put in place a year or two ago, but come February this past year, I was getting phone calls from secretaries. Mrs. Swear and Jim was sending out emails, if you can work one hour. You know, that something's wrong with that incentive is not bringing forth uh, the substitutes that you want. Um, I know that you're, you're reviewing your priorities from last year. You're also reviewing, uh, introducing your official, athletic official pays. And I'm not griping about the official's pay. I have a soccer referee at home, and that's fine. But when a soccer referee is getting $90, to referee one soccer game and a substitute teacher that is in the classroom is making 15 or $16 an hour. There's a little discrepancy here. I, and there is, a, there is another discrepancy that you're losing substitutes for is because I know we, they get paid by the day, but the pay stub is, is incorrect because the substitute is there for seven and a half hours. They get lunch, but this, the pay uh, stub only reflects six and a half hours. I don't know if that's so that when the Governor Parsons had the 550 hours limit for retired teachers, if that was the reason, it, it all came back to when, <coughs> when they went to the uh, block scheduling. It, ne it, it hasn't been right since, and it's been brought up to numerous, several times to the personnel directors and nothing's ever been done. So I'm just trying to let you, when you look at the athletic referee, the skip pay, keep in mind what you're going to do for the <clears> substitutes. <throat> you're not going to be able to pay them $35, $40 an hour like, like you will a baseball official for a four-hour game or whatever. But you can at least pay them so that you're getting quality teachers in the, substitute teachers in the classroom so, for the kids. So that's all I wanted to bring up. Thank you. Lauren Mudd. <coughs> um, hi, I'm with the Fort Zumwalt West Jaguar Robotics team. Uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of our team captain who graduated this year. He's not with us here today. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to tell you about my experience with the Fort Zuma West Jaguar Robotics Team in TSA. I am currently working on an internship out of state and I'm grateful to have my words read on my behalf. My name is Gabriel Maher. I graduated from Fort Zuma West this May and I have been part of the Jaguar Robotics Team and TSA throughout my high school years. The program has been such a positive influence and guiding force for me. It is more than just building a fundamental foundational knowledge of engineering, and I have developed many skills, lifelong lessons, and true, fri true friendships. I have learned perseverance, determination, and time management skills <coughs> faced with challenges. For the past two years, I have been honored to participate in a leadership role. I gained leadership skills in decision making, problem solving, and communication. I was, happy to, I was able to apply these skills in school. Through this experience, I discovered my passion. I also found my future vocation and career. I will attend State Technical College of Missouri in the Precision machi machi Machining Program um, beginning next month. As a future Fort Zumwalt West alum, I plan to return as a mentor. I have so much passion for robotics. I hope to continue to mentor as I enter the workforce after graduating. I am so grateful to our coach, our coach Bill Fitzpatrick. All the hard work and belief he has invested in me will never go in vain and I will always look up to him. I am grateful for the guidance and support he bestowed upon me and my teammates. He taught us togetherness and unity and what wonders teamwork can bring. Thank you to Mr. Fitzpatrick, our mentors, our speech coach, and the parents for all the late nights you invested in me. I will make you very proud, I can promise you that. I have learned great life lessons from each of you and I do not intend to lose any of those. Robotics and TSA are such valuable teams 
It was an honor and privilege for me to be a part of them. I hope the program continues to be supported by our industry partners, mentors, parents, boosters, and the school board so that my teammates and future team members may also have the opportunity of this valuable learning experience. Thank you. I am here as a parent of the of one of the Jaguar Robotics team members and also as one of the founders of the Jaguar Robotics Booster Club. Um, I wanted to speak about the things that you won't hear when the team is presented in a little bit, particularly about the community support that the team had. Um, in uh, April of this year, the team competed at the regional competition in Kansas City. We really <coughs> didn't know what to expect. The team um, had placed the year before but not been spectacular. This year they were absolutely spectacular. Both of our uh, bots, the seniors, Bot, the advanced bot and the, the JV team both went undefeated until they had to go head to head. Um, there were discussions in the crowd about how we were so dominant that maybe we should just skip that competition um, in future. So we had about four weeks to get the funding together to take those kids to the national competition for the first time ever. Um, and we couldn't have done that without the support of the city, particularly Jim Odmeyer, who allowed us to present at the city council and seek community support there. And then Mike Elam, our county councilman um, that represents the Fort Zumal West area, supported us. But I also wanted to mention some of the businesses that supported us. Uh, Mittler Brothers, which is located in uh, Warren County. Uh, Patterson Tool and Die, which is here in St. Charles County. Um, uh, Hydromat, which is closer to the, the more in the city area, those are companies that sponsored us by helping to machine parts. So the kids, given more infinite time, um, they they do all of the work for the team outside school hours. It's an it's an all kind of outside activity. So we have those corporate partners that help us, and there are others. But I wanted to mention those in particular because they helped machine parts. So they really deserve a lot of support. But the other thing I wanted to mention, and Gabe's speech also mentioned it, is that this is an activity that is unique. There is no other activity in any of your schools that teach hands-on how to machine. And when a corporate partner is looking for somebody, even if they have an engineering degree, they're gonna be beaten out by somebody who has had that hands-on experience being in the trenches, and I encourage you, if you haven't already, watch some of the matches that are on TV. There's still, there's still a link, I know it was emailed to all of you, it's still a good link. Watch some of those matches, watch what the kids did. There were times when they had two or three minutes to replace a part, get stuff done, they all worked together to do that, it is incredible. And there's no other activity that you have that does that. I know you've, you've just heard a speech about salaries. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you know your athletic coaches uh, coach for a smaller, a shorter season, similar hours, and get paid far more. So I encourage you to consider kind of adjusting that and also expanding this activity to the two high schools that you have that don't currently offer it. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. DeBray, members of the board. Thank you for inviting our amazing West High Jaguar Robotics team here tonight to be honored for their accomplishments this year. What a feat to have not only placed first in regionals, but to have placed 10th nationally, their first time at nationals, where many of the schools have been competing for years. I'd like to thank Mr. Fitzpatrick, who has given so much of his time, sacrificed time away from his family, and truly cares about these kids. <coughs> I've witnessed him give tough love when needed and guidance and advice when asked. He also encourages the kids to get outside their comfort zones and challenges them to figure things out without him, relying on each other and their knowledge. He challenges them to improve their social skills as well in area as well in areas some struggle with. He instills in them the confidence they need to grow and a safe space to develop their skills. I truly think he, he deserves a higher stipend for the work he puts in. I hope the board can help make that happen. 
I'd also like to thank our electrical mentor, Mike Moore, who, was given, who has given many hours to the program and has demonstrated patience and shown grace to the kids. He has taught them electrical skills they can continue to build on. I'd like to also thank the parents who are unbelievably supportive and make things happen, often with very little to no notice. These kids over the last year have functioned much like a family over the ups and downs they have experienced. They have had each other's backs, provided support and encouragement when needed, worked as a team to troubleshoot issues, and have become a well-oiled machine, so to speak. Not only that, but they enjoy spending time together even outside of robotics. They have gotten together over the summer several times just to hang out. The work didn't stop when school ended either. They are already busily preparing for next year. This summer, they have been making the rounds to their various sponsors to thank them for their financial and machining support. They've been working on learning and refining their skills on SOLIDWORKS, a computer-aided design and computer-aided engineering program used to design each part of the bot. And some have been learning Mastercam, a software that provides both computer-aided design and computer-aided machining functionality, so they can operate the CNC mill machine, which allows them to machine parts to very specific shapes and sizes. Over the course of their time on the robotics team, they have learned real-world problem solving like you do on the job. They've learned what it's like to work under pressure and stress. In doing this, they will be well prepared for the first work situation. It won't overwhelm them to the, po to the point of defeat. They'll recognize, oh, yep, I've been here before and will know just how to handle it. They'll be familiar with making decisions as part of a team, adjusting plans often at the last minute, creative problem solving, and thinking outside the box. The importance of time management, task initiation, division of tasks, planning and organizing of tasks, etc. All skills companies are looking for. They are reliable and dedicated. All of these things will serve them well as they move on to a four-year university, tech school, community college, or straight into a job. Whatever opportunity they choose, robotics will have been integral in getting them there in many ways. So I ask tonight for your support of this program to help it grow and be in place for years to come for many other students to continue to prepare them for the amazing future ahead of them, whatever path they may choose. Okay, we have two items of recognition to bring to the board's attention this evening. They're always exciting when we can bring student groups in to meet you. Uh, first, I've invited uh, Leanne Sanders, the coach of our state champion, uh, second year in a row, girls soccer team from South High and uh, as many of the team members that could be here <coughs> with the board this evening. Uh, Kevin Keltner, our principal at South High, is going to do the uh, honors. Kevin? Good evening, Dr. Gray, Ms. Powers, the members of our board and district office administrators. It's good to see you this evening. Our co-curricular programs at South High School and throughout Fort Zumwalt are an important part of our educational endeavors. They are, as Ms. Wagner and I have discussed before, they're the porch light of the place because I've seen people, we do some amazing things in mathematics and science classrooms and I've seen Ms. Sanders' mathematics or physics classroom there. I've seen some amazing things happen there. I've never seen anybody jump up and cheer and lose their mind in there. I see that in our co-curricular programs. I see that in the robotics program at South High School and at West High School. And the neat thing about that is in those activities, we can teach children a very important life lesson that I can't teach in the classroom. And that is sometimes you lose. No matter how good you are, or how hard you try, it happens. And how you learn to deal with that, bounce back from that, and keep going is an important aspect of things. In the 2020-21 school year, our varsity boys team won the state soccer championship and our varsity girls team decided that was a good deal, they'll do the same thing. And so they did that <coughs> the first time, I think in Missouri, a public school has won both of those. Our varsity boys liked it so much, they did it this past fall and repeated as state championship. And our girls, these young ladies said, oh, if they can, why don't we do the same thing? And so they took out, and I don't know as I've witnessed a team that dominant. They figured out how to make some things come together in a fashion we've not seen in girls' soccer in the state of Missouri in quite a long time. In class three, they finished the season with a record of 26 and one. They had that one loss in the middle of the season that kind of put them in check a little bit and said, you know, if we don't keep things on our toes, that can happen to us. And that's the only time it did. 26 and one, when they got to the state playoffs, they outscored their opponents 25 to four in the state playoff series, winding up with five All-Staters, one individual named as the Class Three Goalie of the Year, one year individual named as the 
Class Three Player of the Year, and another individual for only the second time in Zumwalt South history named as an All-American. And so we're excited to have these young ladies with us this evening and Coach Leanne Sanders. Couldn't be more proud of them. They've done a lot of great work. Coach Sanders, why don't you come up and talk about these young ladies and then we'll introduce them and get them up here and uh, good. see what's going on. Actually, I'm going to have you guys come up with me right now. It's better, it's better not to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much for having us. This is incredible to be back for the second time, obviously, and I got to bring more um, of our players with us this year. Um, Dr. Keltner gave a lot of the different statistics of our season and things that we were able to accomplish, but um, what makes me even more proud is the group of people I have behind me. This group of girls is um, an excellent group of students. They are kind and considerate to each other. They are uh, show amazing sportsmanship on the field. And um, these types of things don't happen overnight. These don't happen um, without years and years and years of training and dedication and driving to practices. Obviously, huge thanks to all their parents who have made a lot of that happen. Um, but the amount of talent, the amount of passion for the game, the amount of energy that these girls bring every single game is something that every single coach dreams of. There is no way that you win games the way that we did without all of those things combined. So this group of girls has proved to be, as Coach, uh, I'm sorry, as Dr. Keltner said, absolutely dominant. They are a dominant group of girls in every aspect of the world. Word. Um, so I'm going to go through all the girls that are here today. We have Brooke Mewling, Emma Schultz, Senior Captain Ashlyn Smith. We have Lauren Heath, Mackenzie Buss, we have Ma uh, Megan Daniel, Mallory Daniel, Jordan Moore, Hannah Schultz, Isabel Schumacher, Marissa Franklin, who we can all see we hope to have back next year, and Audrey Smith. So thank you guys so much for all your support. We appreciate everything that you guys do, and I appreciate all of these girls behind me so incredibly much. championships last year and this year and it was a lot nicer that when you dominated them and you didn't have to worry about where you're going to win that game or not you just knew you just knew they were so congratulations again uh, the next group that we'd like to recognize are our battle bots robotics team from uh, west high school who uh, competed in the national championships in pittsburgh Pennsylvania, and Ed Dreyer, our principal at West, is going to do the honors. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, congratulations to you ladies, two in a row. That is awesome. Congratulations to South High. Uh, good evening. Uh, as you've heard this evening, uh, West High has a pretty good um, robotics program. And it's my honor to be here this evening to share with you some of their successes. Uh, this past school year, under the direction of Mr. Bill Fitzpatrick and multiple parent volunteers, 18 students from West High worked on and competed on two different robotics teams. I can't even begin to tell you how many hours these students prepared for these competitions, but it seemed like every time I was leaving West High School, either at the end of the school day or after a supervision, they were working. Now, both teams competed in April in the regionals uh, held in Kansas City against colleges and high schools, technical schools from six different states. Our varsity team, with their, and this is the coolest part, their battle bot named Blitz finished first in that regional, and the junior varsity team and their battle bot Sabretooth finished second, only losing to one another. Both teams earned the right to participate in the national robotics competition held in Pennsylvania. That was at the end of May. At nationals, the varsity team finished 10th, and the JV team finished 30th. I can't even begin to tell you how proud West High is of these students for their accomplishments within the robotics program. Not only did our robotics team compete at the highest level possible, but they did this while taking classes such as calculus, physics, chemistry, engineering, 
and doing robotics sometimes till 10 and 11 o'clock at night. So at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Bill Fitzpatrick and the West High Robotics team. And as our friends from South High did, why don't you just come on up? Great idea. I think we got one of the robots with us. Is that correct? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Well, uh, I wasn't expecting all this uh, pat on the back stuff because I'm not used to that. But I do appreciate it. And I'd also like to thank the board first off in uh, hiring Dr. Dreyer as our principal because that was an awesome decision, as our uh, Fort Jamal staff would agree. But uh, there's not much more I can say about these guys except that most people really do not understand uh, the time and commitment. For instance, uh, he mentioned that we were competing against universities. So what I mean by universities, these are engineering universities, such as Missouri S&T, K-State, Oklahoma State, Pittsburgh State, uh, and actually the reigning champions, uh, North Dakota State, uh, as far as the, the robotics is concerned. And there is no guarantee that you get to compete. So in years past, I have seen universities as well as other high schools never get to compete because their bots either don't work and are not finished. For instance, one year we got excited and when we first started getting into this, we saw, oh, Ronald's gonna be here in Mizzou and we're gonna get to see their engineering programs and talk to those kids and, and excite these kids about engineering. And they didn't show up because their bots didn't quite work. So these kids can work all year and up to the last second and if their bot does not work and pass inspection, they have two levels of inspections because these machines are basically a wood chipper on steroids that can chew through metal <laughs> and steel. And I mean, literally, they have to be in a safety cage to actually run on the stuff. It's, it's amazing if you've ever seen one of these videos and, and what happens. So they have to actually finish. And unlike sports, and of course I've been involved in sports, my kids sports for years, there's no end to practice. You have timelines just like what if you would have at a uh, engineering firm or a machine shop or stuff like that. If you don't meet your timelines that are spec throughout the year, the only thing you can do is work harder. And since these kids do not naturally uh, come with all this knowledge and ability, they have to learn everything everything from scratch. And then we had uh, like uh, Mike Moore back there, the six foot seven giant in the back room, who is an electrical engineer from Boeing, come in and help teach actual electricity. Because you know, you're gonna have to know that to build this. We actually do machining. Uh, all this has to come forward, so many of these kids have zero knowledge when they start this. And the only way to do that is to put hours in. And then they also learn failure. That's all we did was fail. And they start realizing that failure is not a bad word. Failure is learning. Okay? Uh, matter of fact, if you're not failing, as they often hear me say, you're not trying. It's not hard enough. So if you're succeeding in everything, then you're not doing something that's hard enough to challenge you. So they took up the mantle, they put in the hours. If we didn't meet the deadline, it didn't work. Well, we're gonna sit, we thought we were gonna get done at five today. Well, guess what? We're working till 10 today. Oh, well, that didn't work also. Well, um, I guess we're coming in Saturday. I guess we're gonna spend our Friday night here. And then pretty much as the year goes on and that, and that ending time comes closer, all they can do is roll up their sleeves and work hard. So they start learning what we call soft skills, which is successful in every single form of life. Okay, and this is something that we push in, in our area and teach. So time management, teamwork, communications. They have to form their own company. They have to do their own documentation. So the documentation, they scored the highest at the six state regional beating out the universities. And these are engineering students that are third and fourth year engineering students at Rolla, K-State, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these high school students as well, we don't know that stuff, so we're gonna learn it and then we're going to put it in that 300 page document to actually beat the universities. So these kids have a bright future. And if it wasn't for you, the board, and great principals like Dr. Dreyer, 
these students would not have the opportunity to find out what this is like. Now they can decide what kind of future they want to do. They're not going to go to college and change their major 10 times and waste their money. They're not going to go to tech school and spend their money and then change their mind three months later. They're going to know exactly what they're going to do and they're going to be very successful at it. So I cannot tell you how much time that, that these guys have put in because it's ridiculous. It takes about a thousand hours for a team with zero experience to build this bot after school. Then you add the extras and that's if to get it there. So when they did their hours, which is inside their documentation and everything they have to keep up with, plus their money and, their, and the cost and everything else, I believe it came out to about 1,300 plus hours this year um, to be successful. And once they start the journey, it's either you quit and never finish and whatever you, time you put in, you're done, or guess what? We're going to roll up our sleeves, stay until 10 tonight. We're going to stay at 11 tonight. We're going to come in 7 o'clock Saturday morning, and we're going to stay until 8, 9, 10 Saturday night because it's either they quit or they keep pushing. And this is why so many companies like these students. And we're, you keep hearing that these companies are, are, are helping them out and, and giving them stuff because they want them as human resources to build their, their, their companies and make them stronger, which kind of relates to all that. So I can go on forever about this, as Dr. Dreyer will probably tell you, um, because I love this stuff, and this is all I do 24-7, so I can talk forever about this. But uh, I can't say enough. And as far as we, there's usually 20 kids. Um, obviously, a lot of the kids, we have some kids that are scattered all over the place over the summer. Some are on vacation. Some are, you know, actually working and doing things like that. So, but we did at least get 11 up here. So, you guys want to introduce your names? I am Drew Locksnake. I was the driver of Blitz. Uh, my name is Dago Edwards. I was the head of management for, for Blitz this year. My name is Parker Jorn. I was co-head of design. My name is Andrew Merkel, and I am the CEO. My name is Chase Mueller, and I recently joined. My name is Luke Schmidt-Berger. I also recently joined. My name is Thomas Zanolski, and I'm the other component. My name is Grant Murkowski, and I'm a junior machinist. My name is Ben Jaggi, I'm the captain of Sabertooth. My name is Maureen Mudd, uh, I help head electrical for Sabertooth. Uh, my name is Garrett Ray, I also help with Sabertooth's electrical system. Uh, my name is Akasha Say, also my first year on the team. Okay, well, again, I could talk forever about it, but I know we don't have that kind of time. So I would again like to thank you so much for giving these, these guys the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to reverse it. <laughs> All the engineers are going to find out. Good to see everybody. Mr. Fitzpatrick, Mrs. Powers, Dr. Dreyer. Mr. Jagger, I've got a tall guy in the front. We're going to month uh, we had uh, revenues of nineteen million five hundred ninety two thousand one hundred thirty two dollars and eighty one cents that's made up of four point eight million in local sources five point one million in state sources 
and 9.6 million in federal sources. That gives us a total for the year, total grand total of receipts of $348 million. We had expenses of $71,464,627.34, which uh, was made up of 39.6 million of salaries and benefits, 1.6 million for purchase services, 1.6 million for supplies, and 28.4 million related to debt refunding. Uh, that gives us a total for the year because this is the last report for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. It gives us a total of $280.2 million in total expenses. Uh, this month we had utilities amounting to $287,186.54. Last month it was $356,000. $441, so gives you some comparison, it's in the same ballpark. Accounts payable, $161,754.84. Uh, that's a low amount for what we normally have in a month, but last month we had two, uh, or this month we had two opportunities to pay accounts payable, the regular meeting and the last meeting of the year on June 27th. Um, so what that does, now that we're finished the year, it gives us a balance uh, total of $121,695,000 uh, $695,481.73. Um, we have invested as of June 30, $136,010,629.96. The reason that there's more invested that in the balances is that we hold uh, payroll checks over the summer for many of our of our teaching staff members who uh, would prefer that we give it out as we normally do. Uh, some can get it right at the uh, end of June, um, but some allow us to hang or want us to hold on to that money. So there's more money invested than actually in our balances. Leaves us with a balance in the operating fund, that all important operating fund of thirty. Seven million, thirty-seven, uh, seven, thirty-seven point seven million dollars, or seventeen point four percent. If it wasn't for the one-time money we had, that uh, balance would be closer to thirteen percent. So, we did recover with the one-time money and some uh, better than expected uh, sales tax collections. That we uh, we are up at seventeen point four percent but it would be 13 if it wasn't for the one-time money. So that's the financial reports for the month. I would recommend that you approve it. Any questions? Any questions? I need a motion to approve the financial reports presented. Christopher, second. Council. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Jeff, you're in. You said you could hear us, but I'm not hearing. Uh, yeah, I'm having, it's a little hard to hear you if you could just speak up. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you. Yeah. Yes, I vote yes. Okay. You're good, Tom. All right. Good. Old business. First item under old business, uh, Lisa Kester is going to give you an update on the uh, current uh, projects underway this summer. Thank you, Dr. Brain. Members of the board, um, in your board packet, um, we have started a bond issue recap to give to you. We'll be presenting this every month. What we've done is we've taken that first sale of bonds, $55 million, and we've got it separated into our different project headings, and we've listed the budget, that, what we've obligated. So this is going to keep growing as we go through this bond uh, preparation and spending. Um, in the end, you'll see a percentage completed as well, so you kind of see how we're going on that spending for what we've obligated for those different um, headings. Uh, right now, it's very little, as you can see. We're just beginning our process, but I am meeting with architects and engineers on the four uh, big uh, construction projects at North Middle, North High, Pheasant Point, and Mike Clemens Center, meeting with engineers on HVAC, um, we're looking at the band and orchestra instruments, so we've got a lot in the works. It's just not showing up yet because I don't have any quotes or, or any information, but we'll just keep this, this uh, spreadsheet growing every month. 
So, and our normal summer projects that you approved, I just want you to know they're going well, we're on schedule, um, and it's all coming along really nice. So, any questions? Thank you for putting this together. No, not a problem. Very helpful. Oh, Jeff, do you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm the handle here, I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Yeah, my only question, and I know we're very preliminary stage and these numbers will be changing, uh, but I'm just curious um, how we've come up with the numbers that are listed for the budget on your spreadsheet at this point. Those were um, numbers that we had taken from past projects and we had looked at what we had spent uh, and kind of got a roundabout budget figure on, on what we need to do. So it was kind of a process of going through past projects um, and okay. square footage prices yeah Jeff we uh, have we go ahead Bernie I was just gonna say that you know we divided up the whole 125 million um, we've only um, sold the 55 million and these projects had some numbers with them uh, when we were talking with parents and and different groups okay but they're rough I guess I mean, my own they're yeah. rough. And I know they're raw. I'm just, I want to be sensitive to the fact with inflation and some of the cost overruns that I know even though these are preliminary, you know, probably the more accurate we can be, we don't want folks to think we haven't done our due diligence. So that's only I ask, I, you know, I trust we're doing that. I just want to make sure that, you know, we're doing our part to make sure that, that we get as close as we can every step of the way. Yeah, and I think we'll be able to be more accurate as our architects uh, move forward in the design process and get through right. um, uh, design development and schematic and up to construction documents. We'll be a lot more accurate when we get ready to bid. Yeah. Right. Hopefully those prices will come down. That would be nice. Yeah. Yes, would. Not going to hold my breath though. Thank you. Go on, Lisa, with okay. your next item. Uh, the next item I have that's on the board agenda is I had submitted a memo to Dr. Debray when we were doing the field turf uh, improvements at um, north, south, and west, uh, we had identified some additional enhancements that the coaches and the and thought would be a good idea. So we got some pricing with those. Um, the total of those enhancements was an additional forty-three thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars. Um, so I'm asking the board if we can proceed with those. Just to let you know, as a side note, we're still coming in under what we had budgeted for field improvements, even with this additional enhancements. Yeah, review the enhancements for the board. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, North High School. Um, we're adding some additional <coughs> colors to the end zone and to the center, uh, that field. Their school colors, unfortunately, are green and gold, and the turf fields are green, so we tried to put some extra outlining around some of them to really make it stand out, um, and we enlarged the center logo. And then at South High, uh, they wanted to change their logo from the S and H to a bulldog, which is very detail-oriented, but I think it's going to look amazing when it's all done. And then um, at the four high schools, we're having to shift and add some soccer tie-downs for their soccer goals so that they don't have to put sandbags on them, things like that. So we're having to move those a little bit, or add them in some cases. So that's what the enhancements were for. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Lisa? No. All right, we need a motion to approve the turf field enhancements that have been presented. Mr. Moore, second. Callahan, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you. Aye. Uh, next item is a conflict of interest, interest ordinance policy BBFA. This sets the ground rules for school board members' actions with the school district as far as nepotism and dealings with the district. It also requires that everyone fill out a financial disclosure statement. As long as this BBF is uh, uh, readopted every two years, then the only people that have to fill that out is me and Jeff Orr, the Chief Financial Officer. So it's just for convenience more than anything else. But if you look at the policy on the last page, you'll see all the times it's been readopted. 
So policy BBFA, I would recommend that you would approve it. Move for approval as presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item is the review of the 2122 Board of Education priorities. Um, I've given you the memo that goes along with that review. I'm sure you've had the opportunity to look at it. So I'm not going to review all 10 of them. Um, I will say some have been a lot more successful than others. So I just want to hit on a couple. First of all, uh, Board Priority 2, develop plans to improve the financial status of the school district. Um, we did a good job in that. We've gotten our balance with the help of the federal uh, stimulus funds up to 17%. Uh, it would be 13 if it wasn't for all that uh, stimulus money, but there were some other good things that happened. First of all, we good and bad. We've struggled filling all of our support staff positions. And because of that, um, we've gotten by with some overtime and people working extra, um, but we've saved all of the, the uh, positions that have been unfilled, and we've saved uh, fringe benefits on that. So that's been a good thing. The uh, Proposition C, which is a state sales tax, one cent for education, um, that's come in a lot better than what we were counting on, what we were originally told, so that was a good thing. Um, Jeff Orr has done a really good job watching the budget carefully. We came a million dollars in under expending the budget, so that goes right back into the balance. That was a good thing. So. Um, it, I think we are at least in a comfortable position. We're not in great shape because of so much one-time money, but we're not in dire straits either. So I think that was successful. I think Jeff did a really good job with that. We passed uh, Board Priority 3, make plans to develop and promote a major bond issue for capital improvements to be presented April 5th, 2022. $125 million, um, we got almost 68%. Uh, as I've told you before, I thought Laura Wagner did a masterful job with her responsibilities and meeting the public and uh, planning out a uh, uh, campaign, a promotional campaign, not only using traditional uh, yard signs and billboards that we have available to us, but the social media. Lots of uh, contact with our stakeholders through the social media. She just uh, did a fantastic job. $125 million is going to take us through six to eight years to spend it all. I believe it will be transformational, and I think she deserves so much credit for what she was able to do. So that was Board Priority 3, and the only other one I would mention is the reading program. Board Priority 4, establish a district committee to study and implement improvements for the reading program, including a review of the issue of dyslexia. I think Jen Waters, Laura Smith did a great job. Uh, the board approved seven recommendations at the last meeting, and they are going to make a difference pretty quick. It's not going to be years. It's going to be a lot less than that to make an improve, improvements on these kids that are struggling to read. So uh, I really felt they did a nice job on those those uh, on that priority as well. So, um, I've, you've got my memo, you've had a chance to look at it, those are the three that I wanted to highlight. And I would recommend that you would approve uh, this past year's uh, district priorities, at least a review of those priorities. Does anybody have any questions? I just want to mention, Laura, Jen's not here, I really appreciate the view that the committee took and that we were looking at reading as a whole and helping all kids to make sure everybody who is struggling is getting out because it's all so important and that was something that was really um, valuable for everybody and I think it's really going to instantly help our district out tremendously with all the struggles that we had in the past couple of years with COVID and all of that. So I just want to thank you again. All right, I need a motion to approve the 2021-22 Board of Education Priority Review. Christopher, second. Moore, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. Last night on old business, uh, Jeremy has a recommendation for you uh, to uh, 
increase our stipend for our, our uh, interns in crisis counseling and uh, social work. And I want him to maybe review a little bit about how that's gone because I think it's really been successful this year and helped a lot. So, Jeremy? Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Wright and ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, you have a memo in your packet with uh, uh, regards to a recommendation. If for some of you that were on the board uh, several years ago, we instituted a stipend uh, for our crisis counselor interns. You know, we, we at that time, we would uh, maybe have one or two that would, they, they are partnered with a mentor. Uh, that has uh, some certified certification through UMSL, um, and we had several several mentors that would take on these uh, take on these uh, crisis counselor interns for about 600 hours, um, and up until uh, the recommendation of several years ago, though that was an unpaid position. What we had found is other school districts, both in St. Charles County, St. Louis County, began offering that internship as a as a paid stipend. So. Um, I believe if my memory serves, we had brought that to the board as a recommendation for $1,000, and then that evening uh, the board made a recommendation to do $2,000, so um, I, I doubled that. Um, and uh, it really has been a, a successful program over the last several years. We've actually, within the, uh, within the interns that, that have worked with us, we've, we've actually hired some of them for full-time employment within, our, within the district. Uh, at both at our, I guess, high school and, and elementary level. So they partner both with a mentor, but then also we're able to uh, get the the the, uh, the interns working in some of our elementary schools. That's where we have really seen a need take off within the last several years. So um, so although it's a 600-hour minimum that uh, that they that they work, when when an, when an intern takes <coughs> a position with us, they uh, they're really signing up for three days. Full time a week uh, for the course of the calendar, or really for the calendar school year, um, and and they work side by side with uh, with our crisis counselors, mm -hmm. our social workers. They they are trained on lethality assessments. They work. Uh, they they assist with uh, with running small groups both at the elementary schools and middle schools and high schools. Um, so really has been a very successful program. Um, we the recommendation in front of you tonight is to increase that stipend. To, uh, to five thousand dollars from two thousand dollars that would be for the uh, obviously the course of the school year um, right now we have three interns set for the next uh, for the next school year I, I do believe there were two more that were interviewed today so we may with uh, you know fingers crossed we may start the school year with five which would be the most that we've ever had and I believe that um, that's the kind of allotted amount that we had put forth several years ago would be five so um, it really has been, like I said, has been a, a, a very successful program. Melissa Tishy, who you approved uh, a couple board meetings ago as a, as a coordinator of mental health services, this was something that uh, that really she she kind of bought, brought forth uh, with some cooperative work with uh, UMSL. Most of most of the uh, interns come out of the UMSL program. So, so if you if you have any questions, like I said, that's kind of an overview of it, and I'm going into a little bit more details with the memo. But uh, but yeah, we would like to. Like to see that stipend moved a little bit, if, if possible. Are there other universities that we can work with to get more? Yeah, and we do have we do have. Um, it's it's not <clears throat> like a memo of understanding that we have with them. So they just have probably the the more of the dominant program. Uh, many of the universities they will have <coughs> where the students are in their first stage of it. Then the master's level program that UMSL runs. That's uh, a lot of the kids may be coming from Lindenwood or Missouri Baptist, and then they go there to complete that. Because the the, the interns that we get, they've already they, they've you know finished their bachelor's. They've done their first uh, clinical work, so so to see, say. But then this is really their next level of that, which is why it's that 600. Um, 600 hour minimum. So it's a lot of work that they put into it. Um, so if we get more opportunity than five, are you looking at that to keep? Oh yeah, I think I think we would. You know, right now a little bit of a challenge is getting the, the also getting we need certified mentors. So what you don't want to do is kind of overload one mentor with too many. And we not all of ours. We have um, three, I believe, right now that are certified mentors. And we're trying to get because they they do some. Um, some training through UMSL uh, to get that certification. They have to have that to sign off on on uh, the intern's hours. So, um, you know, right now two's pretty manageable. If you if two interns per mentor, if you went above that, you, you, you know, it does lose a little bit of its effect. But yeah, the more that we can get 
within you know with that are certified absolutely so well, I know that they you know respect that they're learning and and also become possible employees for us I know that they are skilled you mentioned that that they're they're well beyond their masters and their hours and I know of several situations where they've provided a lot of assistance you know we all know that the mental health is, is becoming overwhelming and uh, they really do they do a nice job of of helping out the crisis counselors at each school and, and really provide that assistance. It's not like kind of like a student teacher at that level where you know they're learning more. They, these people, like you said, are, are, are really ready to go and, and do provide a good assistance to these. Yeah, because I've known yeah. a couple of them and it's just been outstanding. Yeah, yeah, very positive. Yeah, yeah. We, we tonight uh, anytime we get to recognize teams and clubs and groups that, that just do outstanding jobs and obviously put in an amazing amount of hours and, and display their passion that's just really makes me evening so I appreciate that and I appreciate the job that you all do <coughs> so. Mr. Mary can you hear me Dr. Mary yes I can um, yeah I would echo that I, it, it, I got logged in look like I missed part of that recognition but I do want to extend my congratulations to West for Robotics too they did a great job uh, thanks Davey for sending me the links so I can participate and thanks to all of you for putting up with me uh, via Zoom thank you Mr. Moore yeah it's, it's always great when we can you know recognize the accomplishments and the dedication of the teachers from you know south bringing a second state to the girls team and the robotics teams and it's just the reminder that that all of the school district is just investing so much time in these kids and these kids are investing so much time in developing themselves and mr fitzpatrick's talking about the soft skills they're learning and the problem solving and the stress that they're going to be under and all these different things these are real life lessons from the robotics team and the same with the stress that the athletes feel on the field and, and performing and excelling and pushing themselves. And it's just, it's great to have that all come together here and see that, because that's why we're here. We're here for the students and developing them and uh, helping them be just uh, really good people in, in society and going on to reach out and reach out to them. It's really good to see. Mr. Kelly. Uh, I just have to comment on uh, the West High uh, Battle Bots. Uh, I, I applaud their diligence and hard work uh, it's, it, they just pour in so many labor hours to get those things put together and be competitive and applauded and then the, the uh, South High uh, girls um, tremendous tremendous soccer games that, 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 that I have to applaud them for that's it alright thank you Lisa I want to thank you and your team for keeping everything on pace this summer you guys haven't had a chance to go around and see the early childhood center there's some different things around it's looking really good so thank you i know scheduling is really important to get in those times and having materials when they're not available is also very challenging um and also with the battle bot so it's so cool that i don't know that everybody realizes there's a lot there's also programs at the elementary school level and they have to have a teacher who does it but they also do it in groups like my daughter did it in girl scouts and they brought some of that into the school and then they have competitions where there were people from all over the world that came to St. Louis and they were competing. And I brought all my kids to see it and it was just, it was really great and the more we can do to encourage that stuff is just so phenomenal because they just saw like, I can do this and I can compete. And for the girls it was really important because it was typically a boy thing and they were there using their minds and coming up with stuff and it was just very empowering. So it's awesome and I love when the teachers do it because it is a lot of time you know to have those clubs and that puts a lot in and a lot of patience especially with the little ones to do that so um, just great job and I appreciate everybody who's doing that so all right I need a motion to go into closed session when roll call right okay roll call please yes Christopher all right Christopher? Here. Mr. Callahan? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Dr. Marion? 
Yes. Ms. Powers? Yes.
adjourned.